Hey, you, hey, you, come on, sit down. You're sitting at the grown ups table. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella. And as always, my partner in wait a second, that ain't my partner in crime. What? what? It's a special guest. It's a special guest. John will be joining us soon. Could you please give it up for Darth Gronick, everybody? Give it up for him. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, John's um tied up right now. Uh, literally tied up. I. <laughs> All we're missing is your Riddler mask and a riddle to figure out how we're gonna save John. <laughs> That's all. No, no, we don't. <laughs> no, he he doesn't get a riddle. He doesn't get a shot. No, it's just just the way it is. <laughs> Sorry, John. I learned from watching Batman movies. Don't give him a riddle. Don't give him. A riddle. Just kill him. His plan is simple. Yeah, yeah, it's not as flashy, but that's well, okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk. So let's let's get right into it. So we're going to talk about Batman, but before I, we go any further, make sure you like and subscribe to this video if you're watching it on YouTube the next day, or if you're watching this live on Facebook right now, like and share, and so everybody else can watch the show and enjoy. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Batman. Now neither of us have seen it yet. We have tickets to see it we will be doing a show next week uh to talk about our reactions to this film but for today we're not only going to talk about the batman uh that is coming out but we're going to talk about the batmen of our generations going from 1966 uh adams west all the way up to pattinson uh because we've had a, a, a wealth of batmans not all great but most were excellent and uh the, most the story- most what? most went above and beyond what we thought they could do. But we'll most, talk about them later. We will definitely talk about them later. But uh, but before we go any further, I want to make sure everybody, uh, be sure to uh, tell us what your favorite Batman is, who which actor it was, or even his greatest moments. Because, you know, we want to hear what you like. And, hey, if you have a killer comment, best believe we're going to be putting that up. We're going to be talking Mark- about that and... We're talking about that. movie Batman, right? Live the movie, action, Batman. movie Batman. Yes, movie Batman. And that does bring Kevin Conroy into the conversation because Mask of Phantasm, I still hold very close to my heart as one of the best Batman movies out there. Not that it's the best Batman movie, but it's the best Batman movie that is about Batman. But we'll talk about the differences and the subtleties of that. But for right now, why don't we get into it? Let's start talking about the Batmans of our times. Uh, I can't think of another Batman to start out with than uh, Adam West in his movie, uh, Batman, the movie. Uh, what a great film. Um, it super was Super cheesy. Loved it. Super cheesy. I, I think one of my favorite moments of that movie was where they're, they're, the magnetic uh, buoy has them trapped. A torpedo is heading their way. Batman's using this device to deflect the first two torpedoes but the batteries die and the torpedo hits the buoy and then the villains are like yeah we killed him and they look at the buoy and like wait there's no remains cut scene batman and robin are going away in their motor they're the bat boat and robin has this look of terror like i can't believe that happened and then batman goes yeah <laughs> those poor porpoises threw themselves in front of the torpedo to save us <laughs> i love it beautiful beautiful uh, my- my favorite part about that movie, it's been a while since I've seen that movie, but my favorite part is him running through the docks with the oh big two. God. What was the I, order? He was going to throw it over there, but there were nuns. He was going to throw it over there, but there's a field trip. He's going to throw it in the water, and then there's ducks. <laughs> but that I love it. Bat, bat shark repellent. Yeah. It was, it, was, so, it was so interesting about the movie. It felt like. It, it, it felt like a very self-aware parody of comic books. That was what was so interesting about it because it wasn't being, because it, I mean, yeah, it was being cheesy, but it was, but it went to the audience at all the time. They always let you know, like, Hey, we it know. Held, it held true to the comics of that time. Yes. It held true yes. to the, um, it was very campy and very just fun. Yes, and they they it, it, it traveled very well to to the big screen, um, and of course the TV series. Yeah, um, was was it good at the time? 
for its target audience? Yes, it was. Yes, yes it was. You go back and watch it now. No, it's not good. It's <laughs> it's super cheesy. I love the Pat Tootsie. <laughs> it it's good for nostalgia. It is. It is. It, it takes you back to the good old times, watching it with your dad or whatever. Just just good times. Yeah, it, it, it's a great nostalgia watch in that manner uh, because, like, I mean, but here's the thing: I think the reason why it gets away with its campiness is it it's respecting the audience with the intelligence. That's why you know I don't want to jump into this movie yet because we're going to be talking about it soon Batman and Robin. That's why I felt that movie failed because I felt like that talked down in its audience rather than talked with. Like we I, were, I, I have counterpoints to you. What? I have counterpoints because I have oh, going I, back and rewatching it. I love that movie. I get, don't oh, worry. I got my counterparts too. I got my, I got my things too to it. So it, it's a, it's, I think Batman and Robin is, is a very debated movie and we'll have that debate very soon. But I think that's why this movie was very interesting in its campiness. Um, if anybody has any other things they want to say about Adam West, please let me know. Uh, because like I said, great guy, uh, God rest his soul. Uh, he passed. Um, he was always to me, he got, I, it was great that one of his last roles in life was to play Batman against William Shatner's uh Two Face in a cartoon show, the cartoon movie. So, you know, I, I was I was always happy they gave it one more hoorah for uh Adam West. But now let's uh, we're gonna take switch gears real quickly. Uh, we're gonna talk about um, a different Batman uh, of his time. Uh, and and recently, this Batman is coming uh, off a Emmy Award uh, for his uh, t- his uh, role in the TV show Dope Sick, which is on Hulu. But let's talk about Michael Keaton's Batman now. Good old, these good old Kiki, as I like to call him. What? Good old Kiki. That's Kiki. Uh, it's something I I put on Facebook earlier today. Okay. <laughs> This now, this is a crazy thing. So, 1966, we're coming up to 89, fresh off of Mr. Mom, uh, Beetlejuice, very fresh off Beetlejuice. I, it was just within a year. Um, and now he's Batman. Now, I did no one there. thought, no one thought he could do it. Everyone yeah. thought, this is Mr. Mom. This is this yes. is the guy from that movie, Gung Ho. This, yes. is, this is Beetlejuice. He is not an action star. He is, yes. he's going to. He's going to destroy Batman. Yes. And, and this is one of my favorite Batman. Not only my favorite Batman, but he got to take on probably the most complicated and most popular type of Batman to put on screen nowadays, which is Frank Miller's Batman. Mm-hmm. Right? If, you, if knowing the comic books, Frank Miller, it's between Loeb and Miller. Those are the two Batmans that are most of the time on screen all the time. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I totally agree with you with that. Uh, before we I, before we continue, Darth, I just got two things to do. I want to throw up Will. Will you're right. He was the gentleman Batman. He really was, and I, I he, he was style all the way. He was style all Will, the way. Will is also listening from bright sunny California. So if you don't ever want to put up another one of his comments, you're fine. Will, <laughs> have fun in sunny California. I get it. And speaking of which, we have another uh, guest that's going to be joining us right now. He was coming in a little late. This man is busy. This guy has got a lot of things going on. He, I mean, he's fresh off his dry bar comedy special, number one. I tore with this guy. This guy is hilarious. His Batman jokes put my Batman jokes to shame. All right. It, my oh, jokes. I, I know you're not talking about John now. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm Bat Mike compared to this guy. This guy actually had a Batman wedding, and now he is going to be at Giaga Theater uh, to be filming his next special. Please give it up for uh, my good friend, uh, Mr. Dan Brown, everybody. Dan Brown, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate you guys filling me in here uh, with with everything going on, man. I'm excited to talk about the Batman. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Uh, right now, we're just kind of building it up, building up the legacy of all the Batmans through the years. We're taking a few minutes to kind of talk about. It. Uh, so, what do your so? I know Darth, I cut you off with your with Michael Keaton, and I'll ask you, Dan. But yeah, to bring you back to what you're saying, Darth, this is Mister Mom. This is the guy from Gun Ho, and then he kills it. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, blew it out of the water. Everyone thought he was going to just flop, and he was the quintessential Batman. Um, you know, the first guy to do two movies back to back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they hadn't done that until Bale. So, yeah, yeah, pretty awesome, pretty dark, pretty gritty. Um, mm-hmm. Not not anywhere near the Adam West Batman. No, um, no. It, it, it was very, it was a very polar opposite, and it was reflective of, like I said, of Frank Miller's Batman. For those that aren't familiar with Frank Miller's Batman, Frank, Frank Miller's Batman, and I'm using, I, I shouldn't say a more nihilistic Batman, because he's not nihilistic. But he is a Batman who has seen the worst in the world. He believes in the worst of the world. He believes that there is hope and there can be change, but he's darker. He's more brutal and he is more violent. And I think it's because, you know, as, as somebody who's a super not who deals with superhuman, uh, you know, issues, he has to be there has to be a different edge to him. You know, Superman can be more gentle because, yes, he's this all powerful being, but somebody who's flesh and blood. They have to strike fear in a way that is frightening. And I think Keaton did a good job with that that striking fear. Uh, now, Dan, let me pass it to you. Uh, what were your thoughts with uh, Keaton's Batman, you know, being this feared mythos savior of Gotham? So I have very different feelings with the different Batmans. Okay. Um, because I, I remember how I felt about them as a kid. And yeah. then going back and watching them as like a teenager and having completely different feelings type of thing. Like when I was a kid, I thought Michael Keaton was like the most dangerous man on the planet. Move over Ken Shamrock, (laughs) fucking Michael Keaton's walking in the goddamn (laughs) room. Um, And then, uh, you know, after Michael Keaton was Val Kilmer and I was still a little kid at that time. And I didn't understand just how bad Batman forever was. Um, Yeah. and, And, You know, still thinking Batman's kind of a badass. And then, you know, Batman and Robin come out and there's George Clooney and being like, hey, I've seen this guy on TV. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I've seen George Clooney and other things before. Right. And like actually recognized him. And then also thinking that movie was awesome. And then years later, as like a more mature kid, like, oh, man, Batman and Robin fucking blew. (laughs) Was it the credit card? Was it the credit card? Did it was everything. <laughs> how, how do you watch anything in that movie and take it seriously? Now, and I will say this too. That's as the point. Adult, as an adult, I watch it for what it is. I acknowledge yes. it's a piece of shit, but it's a fun piece of shit. Well, let's uh, <laughs> refrain from conversations with Batman and Robin just yet. I want to stick to uh, Keaton's world for the moment. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll definitely so we'll have time back. to talk about it. We'll definitely so, have time. When I was a teenager, that's when I was like getting into wrestling, like actually like high school wrestling, and I started working out and everything. And then I'm looking at Michael Keaton and being like, "This guy fucking couldn't whip cream." <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are they trying to pass off here? Um, and then again, the now, suit man, he had all the muscles in the suit. Yeah, yeah. The, the suit. <laughs> the suit's yeah. not going to make you bench press three hundred. <laughs> well, well, I mean, granted, it suit. was an improvement. I, it was an improvement to uh, Adam West's beer gut, which, by the way, not not hating on it because because of Adam West, I can say I technically have the body of a Batman. So, <laughs> no no arguments with that. So, but continue. Well, thanks to well, Danny, like, well, I have the body of a Batman villain. <laughs> well, you know what, buddy? I am not going to sit here and let you disparage the good name of Adam West. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have some words here in a moment. Um, okay, all right. But I will say this. So I uh, now again as an adult, uh, you know I love every Batman for what it for what it was. Um, but I do look at Keaton, and especially in the 1989 Batman, think, man, this dude killed it. Mm-hmm. This dude knocked it out of the park. And I'm like, there's certain things I would have changed. There's certain things, you know, especially now as you know a much more mature Batman fan been like, okay, I would have made this one a little bit more honest. I would have made this part a little more honest to the, to the character of Batman and Bruce Wayne. Um, But yeah, I mean, now I watch it back and I'm like, well, you know, Keaton didn't have to be perfect for, you know, especially with what superhero movies have become. He didn't have to be perfect. He just had to lay the groundwork. Yeah. You do see eventually the, the future Batman's take over with. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, because like if you look at it, I mean, I I, I don't want to step too far over, uh, because like a lot of people will say Bale is the best Batman, Affleck is the best Batman, but I think they're all the best Batman, but for different reasons. Like I think Bale cinematically, you know, my generation is the best Batman, but Affleck is the best comic book adaptation. In, in this case, uh, Keaton was the we never have seen a dark Batman on screen before. It's never right. happened before. This was the first time where we saw fear. I mean, in the opening scene, we see him dangle a guy off the, the, the roof. We see him take gunfire to the chest. We see him move and walk like, like a creature of the night to the point where these people, they don't even think he's a man, even though they can see his chin and everything. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, like I, there's that, there's no, I, I was like wondering like, can't you see his chin? I mean, if it was covered, I get why you think it's a, a, a beast. Yeah, that's why he wore the big yellow symbol in the middle of his chest. You see the big yellow symbol, you don't see the chin. Yeah, that's true. In the later movies, he has a 10-year-old or a 16-year-old sidekick wearing bright red. You see the kid <laughs> in the sidekick. <laughs> well, it is. Just draw draw the fire, Robin. Draw the so fire, I will, Robin. I will say this. Um, even as a kid, I remember watching Batman for the first time, and I remember them shooting Batman and him falling over and them like, oh, is he dead? Um, and then he gets up, and I was like, who can't tell that this guy's wearing body armor? <laughs> well, I'm wearing with a gun also? well, I'm like, I'm where I'm watching it as a kid, and they're like, Oh, we shot him. Like, we shot him in the chest. Well, you realize he's not bleeding. The fucking yeah. guy's alive. Well, again, they also thought he wasn't a, a human. Yeah, they, they poke at the chest and be like, What is this? And then he comes back to life or whatever and beats the crap out of him. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, mean maybe uh, you go back and rewatch it because there's a lot of bad things about this Batman. Also, we oh, certainly talked about that. We haven't talked about how, um, you know, Batman doesn't use guns. Period. He does not like guns. Guns killed his parents. There are guns in the Batmobile. There are guns in the Batplane. There are guns everywhere. Yeah. Just, well, I mean that the, the that kind of. Uh detail in the batman mythos like that that's where things get very hair picked because it all depends upon who is writing the batman because there's two gun philosophies that i've at least come across in the comic book world yours is one of them definitely yours is definitely one of them the other one is it follows hardcore on on um the shooting end of killing somebody you know what i mean because like there is times where even in today's popular Batman movies and popular comics, he, there are guns on his uh, Batmobile, but it's not a, it's not used as a weapon, but used as more like a cutting tool to get cr through concrete to shoot through something so he can get to the other side. So it's 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 a lethal weapon used as a non-lethal, which is nowadays what some writers are doing to use it as a a loophole, so to speak. Well, you but, saw that in the Dark Knight, where where um, it wasn't quite the opening scene, but it was the scene where Scarecrow comes out and all the the villain, you know, all the gangsters are there and they're making their their deal, and all of a sudden the Batmobile shows up, yeah, and it's sitting there and they're all shooting at it, and then you just saw the word intimidate, and yeah. then it shot like a, a a missile out and it blew up one of the cars, yeah. You know that that's a perfect case where it's like if someone was in that car, they would have been dead. Oh, easily, easily. You mean, but, like, you mean like when Affleck came down on that truck? Yeah. <laughs> the back and, dude, I was like, that was the moment where we were seeing Affleck kill a bunch of people. We're like, no, oh, they could, that, that car rolling, they could still be alive. I mean, that was my, that was the, cool. that was my exact cool. thought in the movie theater with, Ad, with Affleck. And I was like, all right, you know what? It's Hollywood. They might still be alive. And then all of a sudden you see him like shoot through the car and he starts yeah. dragging <laughs> around. I'm like, uh, they dead. No, they're dead. <laughs> They go. The Affleck, Affleck Batman really took a lot of liberties with that. Also took a lot of liberties with Batman doesn't kill. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, I, and, and I and I see the arc that Snyder was going with. But before we get into this, him, let's wrap up Keaton first so that we can get on to the Schmock, uh, Joel, uh, Joel Schmacher. Uh, Schumacher. Yeah, Schumacher. Sorry, I'm Schumacher. like, I just can't talk today. But yeah, we'll talk about his. But real quick, let's see if it's in the comments. 
How much can you credit uh, Burton? Um, a lot. A lot. Yeah. This he is very really much set the scene for the gothic um, city. He, he truly came up with the probably the best Gotham in, in the movie. Easily. I think I think this property, if it wasn't for him at the time, I don't think anybody could have done a Batman movie justice like it needed to be done in order to get what we have today. So I think it was what Burton did was very pivotal to the Batman legacy. Uh, but yeah, but let's go on uh, to our next Batman. Now, our next Batman, uh, this is where just so we kind of have some backstory. Um this Batman in particular uh, kind of got the uh, reins to the Batcave for uh, different reasons. Um, because what happened was there was to be a Batman 3 with Michael Keaton. Uh, but the, the studio, but due to Batman Returns being so dark and they wanted to camp it up so they could sell more toys. Because Sam, Sam Water, I think his name was the biggest toy guy at the time. Because back then it didn't matter if a movie, comic book movie, did well. It just matters if it sold enough toys... That was the box office, technically, not the actual box office. So Tim Burton leaves the project. Keaton leaves the project by default because he's like, you know what? If you're not going to do this right, you're not going to do it at all. So that brings in Val Kilmore's Batman. Uh, enter Batman Forever. Now, uh, what are now? Now, uh, Dan, I know you were kind of stretching into this the, into this a little bit. Can you give us an outline of this Batman? Who he was? And what and his reception to the audience? Yeah, well, like, what do you mean by that? Like, what, when you're saying, like, 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 what? How does he differ from the Tim Burton Batman that Michael Keaton oh. delivered? Well, and, I mean, obviously, the Val Kilmer, uh, you know, the Val Kilmer portrayal was not as dark as Michael Keaton. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like he played up the Playboy a little bit. Quite frankly, I, I say he he was the Playboy Bruce Wayne a little bit better than. Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne was. Oh, yeah, definitely. I do agree with that. Yes. You know, and, and that's so he did do that one part correct. Um, I will say I don't think his um uh, like his fighting scenes I wasn't insulted by. Um yeah. years later, we're gonna see better ones, but not not to jump ahead. Um it, it's really hard to to correctly judge Val Kilmer. I mean, he yeah. only had one movie to go off of, and yeah. it was it was yeah. weird because the movie yeah. was bad, but it made a ton of money. Yeah. And that confused the studios. It's kind of like the whole Superman 3 thing where it was like, oh, well, the movie made a ton of money. It must have been a great movie. No, it was a really bad movie. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, there's a lot of there's a lot of problems with it. I don't think you can pinpoint exactly to, you know to Val Kilmer and say, you were the problem with it. I don't think you can pinpoint to Chris O'Donnell and say, you were the problem with it. I don't think you, you certainly can't go to Jim Carrey and say you were the problem with it. Cause that guy did not phone I, in that performance. I can't go to Tommy Lee Jones and say you were the problem with it. I, <laughs> I do think Tommy Lee Jones was a big part of the problem with that movie. Yes. I could tell there was moments like he just didn't want to do this movie. Cause I mean, you got to think about it. It was 95. And if I remember correctly, that was like maybe uh, two years after he got the Oscar because Fugitive came out in 93. So let's say 94. That's when he got the Oscar. 95. He's in the Batman movie. And, you know, he's playing next to Jim Carrey. And I know him and Jim Carrey did not get along uh, in that. Well, movie. I'm sure when he probably got it, they're like, he's like, oh, Danny DeVito, uh, Jack Nicholson, Michelle Pfeiffer, Jack Palance, all these, these guys. Walking. And, yeah, Chris Rock. Yeah, um, all these these actors, great villains. Oh, you want me to do Two Face? Cool, let's do that. Oh, wait, it's not gothic, dark. It's more neo, um, campy. Not really, not super campy because that's next, but more lighthearted, uh, more geared towards kids, and so we can sell more toys. Yep. Yeah, he, he took over a role from Billy D. Williams. I would have loved to have seen Billy D. Williams as Two Face. Yeah, but, I, yeah, I would have. I would have. I would have no. totally done that. I and my parents thought, bought all those toys for my birthday. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm you know, sure I had. I'm sure I had a couple 
of those toys. I'm pretty sure I did. I did too. I had the uh, the Batcave, uh, Wayne Manor house thing that transformed. Now yeah. let's let's jump over to Schumacher because I know we're I, I want to keep us on track for time so we get time to really uh, dig into the Batman. Uh, now, obviously, we're not. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I know Dorothy. We we all said that this movie was campy. We we hated it. We didn't like it. Darth brought up an interesting point. He said he had counter arguments to this. So I want to no, hear that's the, the next counter- one. The next well, one I have you counter. But I can I can talk about this. Um, well, yeah, I'll, I'll huge- talk about that and Robin with George Clooney. Oh yeah, I love that. I love that one. This one. Um, <laughs> this one was. They introduced way too many characters. Again, yeah. got to make toys. Got to make that money. Um, you did mention the fact that, yeah, this this kind of had this was the only superhero movie that you could come out with. They, they you know, Marvel wasn't doing movies. Um, Superman. I'm trying to think when Superman three and four. This is the time that we should have John around here. Um, yep. Superman three and four came out, and those were bad movies also. So you really didn't have a whole lot of options to go see superhero movies. So they came out with this, didn't really hype it up as new Batman, new new director. Back then, you didn't really get a whole lot of dirt sheets and that kind of stuff. If you were a kid, you just kind of went to the new the new movie. Kids liked it. Older, you know, teenager, twenty uh, some odd year olds didn't. It was just kind of. You know, again, they went to the campy. We had campy before. We had Adam West. We had the bad Superman movies. We had a good dark Batman, and they kind of ruined it. So me watching it for the first time, I'm like, what the hell did I just watch? And then going back and watching it again, realizing that this was a giant toy commercial and um, a completely and totally different. This I think this would, would be considered the first, like, reboot of batman that is Yet, very interesting it, it's still it's still held true with the first couple batman but yeah this one it this was did not have the same feel did not have that tim burton feel did not have the um michael keaton feel this was a, a different batman and you're like okay this was all right but then we got the best batman of the four Batman and Robin. This movie was so bad, so campy, so just over the top. You had to love it. Yeah. I mean, I, here's the thing. When you watch this movie again, drunk, it's really a funny movie. Like, it is just <laughs> No, this movie is the best comedy that was unintentionally written. Like, literally, yeah. I want to tell everybody, get drunk and watch this movie. Because there is Schwarzenegger like, saying, "Take two of these and call me in the morning." <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, it's so great! Take two of these acids. Take two of this acid and call me. No, because I love the scene where Poison Ivy and she's about to go into under disguise to talk to Bruce. She's getting this like really, really expensive wig, putting it on makeup, everything, and then the front seat is Bane wearing a trench coat and a hat with his luchador yeah. mask, driving, and I'm like. What are we doing here? <laughs> it's like she has this like rich like disguise, and he's just like, I know it's you, Bane. I know it's you. It's why like- can you tell? He had the he had the the fedora on. I how know. Can you tell? And the same I way I was telling totally Raphael in the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was that was that was that was Raphael. What? And the, yeah, in the first movie when he goes to see a movie theater. And then he he meets Casey Jones for the first time. He takes off his hat, and Casey's like, "Whoa, <laughs> like, unbelievable!" Like, what? You didn't know. You didn't notice the green skin? <laughs> it's like, or the fact that his face is way more flatter than yours. Or three three fingers. <laughs> I was just like, I always he wasn't wearing that. shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but. But yeah, but let's move on from this because, like I said, I, I want to stay on track because I want to make sure we allot enough time uh, to discuss. Um, go go discuss. back and look at the IMDb for this movie. This movie had so many stars. Jesse oh. Ventura. This had Jesse Ventura and just like as a as a cameo extra guarding the prison. 
Vivica A. Fox was in this movie. You're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was. Uh, I'm trying to think. There was somebody else who was a prison. That prison guard was also. There was the other one. Oh, God. He was uh, the, the other one, not just Ventura. He he was famous for another reason. I think because he, he created the character of Mr. Freezer Bane. I can't remember what it was. But you go look at that and check that out, everybody. But, but yeah. So let's move on to our next Batman because I want to spend a little bit more time on these ones because these are kind of the ones. You know, we, at this point, we, we didn't have a Batman for many years. And then an independent director came along and really went back into the comic books and the mythos of Batman. Now, in the Dark Knight trilogy is vital to every comic book movie done today. I mean, I mean, Kevin Feige quotes, or, you know, the, the Batman, these Batman movies as being the reason why the MCU lives today. Because up until this point, Batman movie comic book movies were not taken seriously. They were giant commercials. Then you had the Batman Begins, and it was this very grounded, gritty Batman that we love. And it, it took two great Batman comic books put together and gave us a story. And then the then then the Dark Knight came out. It won an Oscar. It was one of the first comic book movies to ever hit a billion dollars. It was unheard of. And at that point, there was no longer movie made video games there wasn't this heavy heavy merchandising campaign it moved the comic book movies finally became about the box office it became about the box office now i don't want to talk too much about this time what was your guys' experience when uh this trilogy was going on like how iconic do you feel it is today i have a controversial take on this trilogy so i'll go last okay uh, let's go to Dan. I fucking love this trilogy. I yeah. love it. I love yep. everything about it. Dark Knight Rises has some flaws, yes. but I love this trilogy. I I did not see Batman Begins in the movie theater. I, yes. I waited for that to come out on DVD. Uh, and then once I saw it on DVD, I watched it again. I was like, holy cow, this movie's amazing. Yeah. But I wasn't like, okay, man, I need to see the next movie now. Um. I, I ended up seeing what made me want to see the next movie was when it was in the theaters for like four weeks and they're like, Oh no, uh, we're all sold out for this screening. You have to go to the next one. Mm-hmm. And that's where I was yeah. like, Oh man, like, Holy shit. This movie has been out for like four. And I, I did, I waited four weeks to do it again because at that point I had fallen out of love with the, the superhero movies in the theaters yes. uh, because growing up again, being a teenager, you're kind of like, Oh man, is everything going to be like Batman and Robin? Um, like it yeah. was is, is wonderful movie. Movie. steel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I have that on DVD here somewhere. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> But I I re I re fell in love with superhero movies because of the trilogy. Mm-hmm. Yep. This movie, the, the uh, this franchise was. It, it, I like the first movie. The, I, it, it, here's the thing: this, each of these franchises were interesting. The third one gave uh, me at least a great satisfying conclusion to a trilogy using Frank Miller, one of his most famous endings, adapted. The second movie was one of the best Batman movie ensembles ever done where it was all about the characters, all about Gotham, all about... The first movie, to me, was the first time in a long time a movie was just about Batman, Bruce Wayne, the psyche of him. You know, Mm -hmm. I I mean, the villains, Ra's al Ghul and Scarecrow, were very... I mean, if you pitched it... I mean, that was like pitching Iron Man at that time to be the kickoff of the MCU universe. You know what I mean? You would think it would be anybody else, but not Iron Man, and then that became the biggest hit ever. So it was the sleeper hit in a weird way. You know what I mean? It, 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 this trilogy brought us everything. Now, I know, Darth, you have different opinions on some of this. So let me, let's, uh, I give the floor to you, sir. Okay, so first off, movies were great. All three of them were great. Yes. Um, kept Batman grounded. Kept it as realistic as you could possibly get. Um and still keep it a superhero movie. I loved in the third movie where he, his legs and his knees and everything gave out because of all the abuse he's put on. And that's the way it should be. You can't have, you know, just a normal dude running around, jumping off of buildings, doing what he did for as long as he did and not have physical, just physical detriment to his body. 
Brilliant. Just quick, I want it to be known. He's only was Batman for one year before Rise. Right. They, they, yeah, isn't that crazy? That's how much damage on his body he put. So all of it was great. The the villains were very grounded, except for Two Face, which um, still a grounded character, but the actual just the the makeup they did for him, I thought was just way That's too over the top. Um, I, it just to me, it just kind of ruined it. The really? Bane, I thought, I thought Bane was great. Um, but here's where the controversial part comes in. Okay. If Heath Ledger didn't die, would this movie be as good as it was, as everyone thinks it is? I think it would. And I, and yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think no, because he would have been in the third movie and they would have ruined it. it right well, now, you, have, like you, have a, you have a snapshot of how great Heath Ledger was. And he played the Joker amazingly. He is my second favorite Joker behind um, Jared Leto. But we won't talk about that. Um, I, he played a great nihilistic Joker. It was great. He was supposed to live. He, he yeah. did. Li- the Joker lived. He had to have had a role in the third movie, and they had to rewrite it because he's gone. Yeah. But continuing that, I don't think. I honestly don't think it would have gotten as much praise if he would have lived. Actually, a lot of people. I, I tell a lot of people that, and they get mad at me. So well, his his original role in the next movie. So the ending of the Dark Knight was heavily rewritten um, because um, apparently Two Face was even going to be in the next movie to a certain degree because it would be Joker who's on trial who throws the acid in Harvey's face. So like <laughs> to reburn his face to taunt him like I did it again. You know, to drive. So I think the third movie would have been very more grounded, but I think Joker would have taken a backseat to the being a villain, which, in my opinion, when Joker is the backseat villain, I think he's a better villain. The reason why is he's screwing everything up. The I, the great example I cite is the Arkham trilogy. Bat, he's the main villain in Arkham As- Asylum. Great game. Love that game. Arkham City... He's like this agent of chaos that is fucking Batman over every step of the way to save the day who, where he's fighting Hugo Strange. And I, and I think it would have been very interesting. But again, again, can a guy, can lightning strike twice in an Oscar winning role? Some actors can, some actors can't. So, and we'll never know, but it's a good point. Right. Speaking of lightning striking twice, all right, this, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to quote Marvel now. Because Mjolnir just struck down and brought yeah to our world. What's up, John? How you doing? Hey, sorry about that. You know, responsibilities, work, and all that. But I am here. Uh, I have a question. Did I miss talking about how much of a shitty person Michael Keaton's Batman was? <laughs> no, we really didn't talk into it. What's that? Right? If you want to do a recap of that real fast, we'll let you. Oh, you mean how, like, he didn't save any civilians? He killed a whole bunch of people, and then he pretty much date-raped Vicky Vale? Great Batman. (laughs) (laughs) That will be the best moment of this show ever. My wife yelling in the background, was there... Yes, honey, if you you watch it, it kind of... It really is. Like... it hits the checklist. So, Sarah, if if a female is intoxicated and the other person, you know, is stone sober and they sleep with them, uh, isn't that the definition of date rape? Yes, it is. There we go. Well, that's what happened in the movie. <laughs> she might have said yes, but was she conscious in saying yes, I mean, a court of law would most likely side with her if that went to court. So I that's that. all I'm saying. And now yeah, but he's a bundle of he's Batman. He's <laughs> <laughs> at this point, I'm waiting for John to run away. I'll be back with more inconvenient facts. <laughs> I'll be back again in 10 minutes. See ya. Wait, are we on F like Batman? Hold on, I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'll be back. <laughs> all right, but uh, we're talking about so let's go back to bail. So we're talking about bail. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I stole the floor off of, I think, who was it? Uh, oh, Darth, you were telling us why it was rough. 
Mm. I think I'm done. I, I'm pretty much. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was. It was a good trilogy. Um, a couple flaws, and I, I said my controversial thing. So yeah. Okay. Um, but to also point back to you, Jesse, about how you said Joker as a secondary villain is is pretty good. Um, the Suicide or I'm sorry, Suicide Squad, the first one. Mm. Um, he was the secondary villain because the Enchantress was the main villain. I think him just showing up and screwing up the, the plan and, and doing the little things that he did played a good secondary villain. Yeah. I, I think they, I'm mad about that role because there was a lot more written for him and I'm pissed. But he we'll was talk supposed about to be the villain. He was we'll supposed talk, to be a villain. We well, talked about this in the Joker movies or in the Suicide Squad movie one. Go watch it. It's on uh, YouTube. Yeah. But, but yeah, but no, I, like I said, like there's a lot, but like I said, the air cut, I think will reveal a lot more of what uh, his whole thing is. But I agree with you. He was supposed to be the main villain. Uh, uh, question Is that really actually happening? Are they really going to do another cut of that shitty movie? I hope uh, the air cut is floating around a lot like uh, how Snyder cut was floating around in 2018. Will it actually come to fruition? Please, I don't no. know. I or don't know. know. I don't know. But but let's get on to our our next Batman. Uh, and this one, it, like I said, I think between these two, Bale and this next guy is one of my favorite Batmans. Um, just because it, I think Bale was one of the quintessential um, Batman for the movie cinema. But as for trying to capture the comic book essence. I always felt Ben Affleck was Batfleck. Come on, very, yeah. very on key. Now, Dan, you are a fellow comic book reader. Of uh, how do you feel that Ben? How, do you agree with Batman? Uh, ben Affleck, he did measure up to the comic book, or do you feel that he fell short? I think under um, Zack Snyder's run, yes, he knocked it out of the park. Absolutely yeah. killed it. And I'm yes. I'm a little bit biased here. Ben Affleck's my favorite actor. For, oh. for all intents and purposes, for yes. for that thing here, um, is it because he was the bomb and phantoms? <laughs> What's it? He was is the bomb and phantoms. Bomb and phantoms, yo. I, um, sauce, bitch. <laughs> phantoms like a motherfucker. But I was not happy when he was casted as Batman originally, okay. because I I did not care for Daredevil, quite frankly. Um, and I just if you find I, someone that did like Daredevil. Please let me know they need to be. In uh, I actually, actually, uh, Al Underwood. Uh, likes uh, Bat Bat Fle or Ben Affleck's Daredevil. But I think does, it was he, does he like the the theatrical version or the unrated version? I don't want to. I don't want to speak for him, Al. If you're watching, answering. If not, I'll hit you up later. I don't want to speak for yeah. him, but, but my back, I like the rated R version. I let's jump back to jump back to. Bourdain. But yeah, we got to get yeah, we got to get uh, dance. But the, the, from here's here's my issue: Batman versus Superman. That original cut, if I'm correct, was four and a half hours. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. The theatrical cut we got was two and a half hours. I remember being so excited to go see that movie. And I saw it in the theaters four times. Four times in the theaters because I had no fucking time. Or I had no fucking things to do with my time. <laughs> uh, so I, I had a bunch of spare time on my hand when that movie came out. But um, first time I saw it, I, I left rather disappointed. Being like, man, I this is not the movie I wrote and I wanted. And then I went back and watched it again and I caught a bunch of things that I missed. Mm -hmm. And then the third time I'm like, oh, wow, there was a, like there is actually a story here in this movie. It's not just a bunch of thrown together garbage. And the same thing with the fourth time I watched it. I was like, oh, this is good um, compared to my my initial time watching it. Then I watched the extended cut, which added that extra what was it 30, 45 Five minutes. Hours. Half yeah, hour, yeah. about a half hour, yeah. And I'm like, oh, they actually explain a couple more things here, and it mm -hmm, makes the whole mm -hmm. story a little bit more well rounded. I uh, then I saw Justice League um, in the theater, and was Man. heartbroken because yeah. I'm like, uh, one, it makes the whole Justice League look like they're just a bunch of of morons, just <laughs> <laughs> and, and all you need is Superman. That, that, right, that was <laughs> right, right. Well, uh, nothing they did was right until they got Superman. Then Superman was the one that saved the day. Compared to the Snyder Cut, it literally took all of them 
You could not have done it without Cyborg. You could not have done it without Flash. You could not have done it without Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman. And here's the important thing. They lost. Aquaman. They You couldn't do it without Aquaman, but they <laughs> lost. They yep, lost yeah. against... And, and the only reason why <laughs> they won is because Barry Allen had to literally go back in time. 10 seconds. That's all it was. He had to go back in time, 10 seconds, change it. The, the you know, So it didn't yep. affect the future too too much but that sets it up for the next movie where you're like holy cow if steppenwolf gave it this much issue what's dark side gonna do mm -hmm. yeah and i i thought affleck killed it um especially in Zack snyder's justice league i think it is a crime that we are not going to get to see more of that i agree i, I wanted agree. to see more and and here's the thing and, I, and i'll address this and i've addressed this on shows I know some people had issues with Affleck Batman killing and, and I, and I understand the difficulty because you know, traditionally Batman has no killing. Role. I think he didn't kill, he just branded and then the people killed for him. Yeah. Well, he also, <laughs> there you go. Darth. There's a difference. He drove his fender into a guy's skull. <laughs> he drove it out of a factory. But my he's thing, just sleeping. Right. But I love, I love the part. branding part. I thought that the was great. great. Yeah, I, I thought agree. that was amazing. Why have we not been doing this? Why has he not been branding dudes? Yeah. Uh, because it, it kind of goes against all things Batman. Well, with this, <laughs> in, in this case, I, I like, because I, the one thing I liked, and I think what Snyder's cuts uh, made us realize that Batman wasn't Batman anymore. He was a broken man. He was cruel because the world was cruel. He lost Robin. He's losing everything. He, he became very nihilistic much like the Frank Miller Batman. And and to see him kill, I think, was a shocking pivot thing that they did with Batman to really let us know how broken he is. And I think it was by the end of Batman vs. Superman, he regained hope, and that hope led to him creating the Justice League, to saving the world with Superman, to resurrecting Superman. So when you see that last frame of him in Snyder's Cut where he's talking to Martian Manhunter, he has a smile on his face for probably one of the first time in this whole tr movie uh, franchise. And it just made me feel like he was restored. He was yeah. now Batman again. So yeah, he smiled at Mercy when he told her, I like your shoes. Yeah. Batman <laughs> I like your shoes. Nice shoes. I'm only trying to steal from your company. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you with the shoes. Nice yeah. shoes. Nice shoes. <laughs> Nice yeah. shoes. Don't mind me. I somehow wound up in the IT room. <laughs> Goofy billionaire, yo. Yeah, I I'm just sorry. Love... I only have I only have one thing to say about Batman versus Superman, and that's Martha. Uh, I don't think that's as bad as completely shoehorning and ruining an entire <laughs> mythology of Death of Superman. But let's pick Martha <laughs> instead, Darth. Cool. Mar Martha. Martha was much worse. Mm. Mm. I just... Well, see, mm. I think Martha was an interesting point because, but because like Batman was no longer feeling like a human being. He didn't view Superman as a human being. He just viewed him as I got to kill this thing. And when he says Martha, it reminded him of his mother as well, and it brought Bruce back to but, life in a weird way. So here's my issue with that, though. Yes, I have a feeling that Batman, being the world's greatest detective, he would have known who Superman was already before that. And he would have known every single detail. He would have known, oh yeah, your dad was sucked up and thrown in a tornado. Uh, yeah, he would true. have he would have known your mother's name is Martha as well. I, I just feel like he would have known that. I think it was just in the moment. I, I think it was more of a moment thing rather than a knowledge thing. Like you know, like when someone's like, hey, but we were friends, and it's like you guys know you guys were friends. It's like you know, like in those movies where it's like you can't do this. I loved you, and then it's like they have that moment where they second guess what they're doing. I I think it was more that, but again, the Martha debate can go on forever. I mean, we could have a whole show just like how there's a whole documentary of Hitchcock's shower scene, uh, you know, which believe it or not, there's a whole documentary of just about the shower scene in Psycho. I think we could do a whole documentary about the Martha scene. But can I be on that episode? I would, <laughs> I definitely, I would love. I, like I said, I've always. I always love to hear your. How about me and Darth being on opposing sides, like cross, uh, like crossfire on the. Oh, I'm down for that. Like that how you great. and uh, you and uh, Ryan did the the horror movie thing, John. Oh you, no, we did. Uh, that Armageddon. Was, uh, 
That oh, was yeah. Armageddon versus Deep Impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could okay. be fun. We could do I, that. I definitely want to do that. But right now, we got final 10 minutes to talk about our next film. Uh, and we'll talk about this in the aspect of what we've seen in the trailers in the commercials. And again, Robert Pattinson, when cast as Batman, like Mr. Mom, like G. Lee and Daredevil, they were they were heavily criticized. Mm-hmm. And and it took in 2020 that first trailer to drop to make us go, whoa. And then you know well, there's there there are trailers on this movie. And I've I've I've, heard, I've I watched have it. not seen a single one. I know. I actually avoid them now because I just want to be surprised. And I'm a hundred percent serious. Yes. Uh, as we um, all know, as people who watch this stream as much as as they do and know me, I don't care about this movie. But I, 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 I am, I am like ninety eight percent certain I sent you a trailer, Darth. You're saying you didn't watch it when I sent it to you? I probably did. I don't remember anything about it. Okay. Well, what are you now? So, Dan Darth, what what are your thoughts on Pattinson's outing as Batman? Will it be great? Will it be memorable? Is is it being overhyped? What's happening here? Well, without saying it, it, it I don't want to say it's overhyped without saying it. However, yeah. I will say that. I, I remember all the hype for the Joker and everyone saying what a great movie this is going to be. And then when I finally got a chance to see it, cause I didn't go, I haven't been to a movie theater in three years. Um, yeah. But I, when I finally got a chance to see it, I watched it and went, that was good, but not the greatest movie I ever saw. So yeah. I, I see everyone saying, you know, it, this is getting 10 out of 10 by this place. And you know, and this critic saying nine out of 10 and this critic saying 10 out of 10. Man, I hope it's 10 out of 10. I, yeah. I really do. I'm not going to build my hopes up. I've been avoiding trailers and spoilers a, as much as I can here because um, it's going to be a while before I'm able to see it. Um, from what, from the stills that I've seen and a couple of the images, I'm like, it's going to be a visually beautiful movie. Yeah. You know, and I'm excited to see what uh, Robert Patterson has to, has to do about it. You know, they, as long I've as seen he doesn't a sparkle. It's a plus. Yeah. <laughs> He's not going to sparkle. Promise. Yeah, I, I, from what I've seen, there's not going to be any light or sparkling in this movie whatsoever. Right. <laughs> it looks right. like it's going to be like a very. Who would have thought Batman vs Superman would have been the funny movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Huh. This Anderson movie, Cooper had to tell everyone that they evacuated the buildings. Huh. <laughs> Metropolis. No one's downtown. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we don't we don't talk about Man of Steel because oh. Superman uh, indirectly killed thousands upon thousands of people. I mean, okay, I will I will argue you on that one too. You come back <laughs> indirectly. You can have me and Darth here on, on your Crossfire episodes. Look, yeah. Darth, it's real so, simple. You you blame it on the employee that got fired. In this case, it was General Zod. He got killed. Just blame it I, on him, and then Superman. Don't get me wrong, guys. I loved Man of Steel. I think Man of Steel was a great movie. I've talked about it multiple times before that movie needed to be set up and he needed to kill Zod to come out and say, I killed once. I will never kill again. I agree. And that, and they did that in the comic books when um, right after crisis, right after crisis, he kills Zod and then says from right then and there, I'll never kill again. Yeah. So he doesn't do it. And that's yeah. great. But again, going back to the Batman, um, from all the still shots that I have seen, all like three or four of them, and I think in passing I might have seen one or two trailers, it looks like it's going to be interesting. Apparently it's going to be a year two story, which is going to be more detective than superhero. And I'm all for that. Yeah, me too. From, well, it's very from, interesting. from the scenes that I've seen, he doesn't look like the billionaire, billionaire playboy pretty boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that most Batman and Bruce Wayne's are. So that's going to put a little bit of a hamper on, on me. Um, Cause well, it's just, what he's can not help, look real. Well, what can help with that is, and, and, and what's very, I think what is working for Pattinson in this case is that this is not, it feels like a Frank Miller Batman, but it's not mm-hmm. based on what I'm seeing. It's a, it's a lobe. It's, it's, it's the long Halloween uh, Batman, where it's very heavily detective, heavily gothic, 
heavily tortured, heavily, you know, it's a lot okay. of that. Don't get me wrong, you're going to see some Frank Miller aggression uh, in this Batman. You don't, I mean, it's it's there. I mean, the anger is there. When he's fighting people, he's at the point where he's still, he when he's hitting a criminal, he's hitting the guy who shot his mother. You know, he's still pissed. You know, but, but he's because he's 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 go, he's this is we're going to see him move away from being just a vigilante to becoming the Batman in this movie. I feel okay. I, I okay. I get down on that. I like that idea. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. my yeah, problem with it. It's it's a year two story. So in the first year, he was he was a basically just a vigilante. He was just the dude who beat up bad guys. Yeah. Now he's some some more mental villains are coming in. You got the Riddler. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming in, and he's going to challenge the Batman, and he's going. Yep. The Batman is going to have to come out and go. All right, what? How do I beat this guy? Now let's talk about the Riddler. I mean, the Riddler has been, uh, I guess, a character. If you pay attention to the comic books, the movies, the cartoon movies, has been changed and changed. Probably, he's one of the most changed characters. You know, and so now we're seeing what appears to be. A very Zodiac killer style seven Joker. Uh, any comments regarding his character? Excited for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. For that. I agree with Dan. I will say yeah. Riddler, I, Riddler can be one of the more scary Batman villains if he's done right. We're not yes. going to see the clown prince that um, that Jim Carrey was, where right. he was all happy go lucky and then once he got more power he became dark and gritty this is just a dude that's dark and gritty and just just playing because he thinks he's smarter than everybody else no uh no frank gorshin and tights man <laughs> maybe under the trench coat because i still that's still my favorite riddler just throwing it out there but dan well you were gonna see you were gonna say something well i was gonna say and all honestly my favorite live action riddler has been from the Gotham series. Really? Okay. Yeah, okay. I I loved the way how, and I, I can't think of the actor's name, and I, I feel like such a dumbass for, for not remembering it. Um, but I love the way how he was introduced, and he was kind of like that, you know, I'm just going to be happy, and I'm going to ask everybody riddles and whatnot. And then you saw that slow descent into insanity with him. Yeah. You know, from, from killing uh, Kristen Kringle, um, you know, onwards to becoming the crime boss that he was, I, I thought I thought that was such a great portrayal of that character. And then, especially at the end, in the second to last episode, where um, him and Penguin are about to kill each other. Spoiler if you didn't see it. And they both they're going in for their hug, like they're going to make up, and they both have their knives and they're ready to just stab the other one in the back. But then, like they have this moment of clarity where it's like, "You truly are my only friend," and and <laughs> they back off. I loved it. Um, I'm excited for the Zodiac killer type of Riddler. Um, mm-hmm. The only thing I'm going to say, the only one I would have been slightly more excited for is the Zack Snyder one that's rumored that he would have been the one to help them solve Darkseid's riddle. Like the oh, yeah, Dark Side. about that. And then at the yeah, end of right. it, he would have shot himself in the head. Um, yep. Oh, wow. He, yeah, like he, he, there's nothing else he, he could accomplish in life. Like he, he figured out the hardest thing there is. So... Anyway, that's just where I'm going to leave that. Sorry, I took too much time rambling about my. No, love no, that, that was that. that was great, and I would absolutely want to see that. And to answer your question, Dan, the actor that played Riddler in Gotham was Corey Michael Smith. Yes, and I think one of the things Corey Michael Smith had a lot of advantage is he, and I think that's why nowadays I'm getting very interested in the comic book streaming TV shows now because they're fish out, they're getting shot like movies, but they can spend time with a character more and really get you to care about the character. Yeah, definitely. You know, like that's why sometimes like, while I like a Batman movie, a Batman TV show done like a movie is interesting. I mean, cause let I me mean, look at daredevil season three. Wow. Wow. Peacemaker to get a little bit Peacemaker. more. Wow. You know? And so, I mean, there's a lot to be desired in that. And, you know, we might have a show where we're discussing a Batman show. You know, we never know because, well, technically, uh, Matt Reeves is in development of Bat Universe movies and TV shows. So we could see Pattinson show up on the small screen. It is very, very plausible. So uh, that is very likely in the future going to happen. Um, 
when we don't know we'll just have to keep watching hbo max and keep an eye on that but uh before we head out what are our final thoughts on this what are our expectations predictions on this movie i'll go round table starting with john John, what are, what are you looking for? So super quick, right before I get to my prediction, I do want to say that if we do get a Matt Reeves Batman universe, I am really looking forward to seeing some of the other villains we haven't seen on film yet. You and I had a uh, conversation about Clock King. Would yes. love to see him yep. in, a, in an actual major one, motion one picture. Villain. One villain I want to see, and that's the Mad Hatter. I was th- th- I, Jesse and I talked about that too. I told Jesse I'd love to see Mad Hatter and give me, give me Martin Short as the Mad Hatter. Oh, dude, that would be perfect. You just nailed the casting right there. Uh, and the last one I want to see in Matt Reeves' universe will be a recycled villain because I don't think Arnold did him any justice. I really want to see Mister Freeze, but I want to see I want to see Mister Freeze from Batman the Animated Series. That's the Mister Freeze that I want to see. One hundred percent. Um, in terms of what my expectations are, or what I'm looking out of this film, I'm I'm looking for this from the year two perspective. I want to see the detective stuff that I'm promised. I want to see the transition from vigilante to quote unquote hero. I want to see some struggles in development of his persona. I want to see struggles with using the equipment and figuring out what he needs to do and making better decisions. I want to see that true struggle between Bruce Wayne and Batman and which one is the dominant personality and how that one evolves into what we would have 20 years later is kind of the Batman we we all know. So I'm really looking for that deep dive into what this was like when he was first starting that that's what I want to see most from it. Yeah. Uh, Dan, what about you? You know what? I I'm, I'm really excited to see a young Batman, mm-hmm. a legitimately young Batman, you know, uh, chipping, you know, uh, kind of Rocky, like you said, uh, finding that smoothing his way into becoming the stealth vigilante that we we do see the one thing i am going to hope for i'm going to hope for it because i'm just a batman mark can't wait to see what their joker's going to look like yeah Mm -hmm. true true statement did you see they they allegedly have casted them i have not they there is a thing floating around online that says that has the actor's name and he is known as unnamed arkham patients <laughs> and, and when you see what he looks like because i've seen him in other movies i literally was like joker yeah sure. i literally sure. i literally said that so if I, yeah that that popped up sorry i mean to cut you off but yeah the joker would be very interesting to see mm-hmm. and reeve says it won't be long he oh wow. he says it will not be long until we see him uh darth what are your thoughts, predictions, expectations? Oh, God, I hope this movie doesn't suck. <laughs> it's um, not going to, man. I don't know. Um, do we need another reboot of Batman? No. Well, um, reboots are dead now with the multiverse. Yeah. <laughs> that heavy uh, sigh. The, 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 CW, I got one right. <laughs> the CW multiverse, CW shows killed the multiverse. And um, Barry Allen, Ezra, whatever his name is, was in the Arrowverse. So technically the, Arrow, the, the multiverse is dead. But then Flash is going to bring it back in the next Batman movie or next Flash movie. I don't know. But um, I want to see Batman fail. I want to see him at first, you know, yes. struggle to yes. beat the Riddler mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. come back and 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 win at the end because yeah. he's the superhero. He's the he's the hero. Um, and finally, kind of at the end of the movie, come to to grasp with, hey, I, I can't just be the vigilante. I've got to be more. And that's where he becomes, you know, the the Batman that we know. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to add one thing. One thing I want to see. I want to see how Bruce Wayne's parents get murdered one more time. <laughs> oh, I know everyone says we don't need to see it anymore. I disagree. I say put that scene in every single movie going forward. A documentary. <laughs> fucking Thomas and Martha get whacked. Fucking re- reboot Marley and me. Thomas and Martha get whacked. You know, 
Oh, you got to think somewhere in the DC universe. That's a five episode limited series documentary on Netflix. <laughs> Killing yep. Wayne. H HBO, um, HBO Max coming soon. Call me yeah. sick, but I'm just not a happy camper unless I know Bruce Wayne's parents are dead. There was a second shooter that night, if you ask me. Oh, God. Do it this way. Let's do an HBO Max series hosted by The Flash. And all he's doing is going through all of the multiverse and watching the Waynes die. <laughs> that's all it is. All of them. Every week. Every week is a different version of how Thomas and Martha Wayne die. <laughs> that's how the Flash spends his free time. And that, his well, that's, that's how the Flash can come out and see how Batman is as cool as he is. That's funny. I He's think it would be great. Like, oh, I only have one parent die, so that means I'm only half cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. the problem. <laughs> Jesse, but, you're up. What are your thoughts, predictions, and expectations? I, I agree. I want to see a, a flawed Batman who who isn't perfect. I want to see him fail. As those, those are his best moments. Even when he's an old man in Frank Miller's Batman, you know he he bumbled around and made too much noise, and he got shot at one point because he hasn't been stealthy in years. And in the newer Batman with uh, Year One, that Frank Miller comic, there's a scene where he fucks up a fight and he almost dies. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I want to see these moments where he's learning. Uh, I want to see the detective story. I do want to see him figure things out because it is absolutely amazing. Um, but overall, but overall, I want to see, I want to see Loeb's Batman because it hasn't been done. It, it really has not been done. Bale was Miller's Batman. Affleck was Miller's Batman. Keaton was Miller's Batman. Um, Schumacher, I don't, I, I, the jury's out. Uh, <laughs> Schumacher. Yeah, but what about Adam West? Schu what Batman was Adam West? <laughs> Adam West? Adam West was the Bob Kane Batman. <laughs> there you go. All right. He was more the Bob Kane, not the Bill Finger, the Bob Kane. But so I think we're getting a new Batman that has never been done on screen before. Yeah, so I'm I think so. Very excited for this. I have one more addition in this Matt Reeves uh, universe. I would like to see a Robin, and I'm not going to discuss the 30 minutes of logistics to get to this, but I want that Robin to be my favorite Robin, which is Tim Drake throwing it out there. Well, I think we're going to get that because Pattinson is open to a Robin. He says it has to be the 13-year-old version, the boy that he's going to raise, which I think is a great I'm thing. Like <laughs> not like Chris O'Donnell who shows up and is he's 25 and, right. and, and like I'm adopting you <laughs> like I'm like are you adopting a 25 year old right. I'm adopting you right now no he's yeah. only 16 he's got more facial hair than I do <laughs> Well, my, my favorite part of that is when Chris O'Donnell's Robin is like, you know, what can my nickname be? Can it be Nightwing? And he yeah. throws it out there. But then he was like, how about college student? <laughs> <laughs> he threw a dad joke at him. He's throwing yeah. algebra books at the enemies. <laughs> get away. Get away. <laughs> learn math. Yeah. But, but yeah, like I said, this Robert Pattinson seems like he wants to be Batman for a very long time. I'm very happy about that. I've wanted this this sort of energy, you know, like just how John Cena is with Peacemaker, how uh, how um, Robert Downey Jr. was with Iron Man. I want this energy brought to the role. I think Pattinson's, Pattinson's bringing it, and so I'm looking forward to a great Batman movie. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Same but here. that is all the time we got today. I want to say thank you so much to everybody who rocked it out in the comments section. Tom, Scott, Will. Thomas, uh, let's see, Ryan joined us for a little bit. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I want to thank our guests, uh, Darth and Dan, for joining us. Really Actually, appreciate technically, it. Technically, John was the guest today. John was technically yes, Yeah, John, sorry. I'm never uh, the guest. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a co-host. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, I want, uh, be sure to check uh, uh, Dan out this Saturday. You're at Geauga Theater? Mm -hmm. Geauga the Theater in Chardon, Ohio. And your name looks great on the marquee, by the way. Yes. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I, and, uh, I can get used to that. <laughs> of course, man. And I want everybody to do me a favor and uh, go to Dry Bar and watch that special. 
Watch it's now special. available. My full special last night was been put on Dry Bar's Facebook app for free or on Facebook for free. So you can oh, watch it on man. Facebook for free. The full special. There you go. Uh, I want you all to watch it. I want you to blow that thing up. Um, and like I said, Dan, Dan, you were one of my favorite comics to always watch. I uh, met you when I was open micing and you were just and you were headlining the uh, the Youngstown Comedy Syndicate. That's how far back we go back. So in, in, in the corner of a pizzeria, you know, Dan has always been class act, funny as hell, and he's only gotten funnier. So, guys, go check out that special because, trust me, you're going to be seeing a lot of him everywhere and every place. Appreciate um, it, buddy, man. I love you, dude. Love you, dude. Uh, I want to say uh, thank you, everybody, who came on out uh to my shows as well i want to appreciate it we got a couple shows coming up this week uh funny farm comedy club in youngstown ohio matt onesti is releasing a comedy special finally yeah, matt it's good so make sure you get tickets for that i want to see you there that friday so there you go youngstown go to funny farm you enjoy us then boom you go to see dan you're gonna have the best comedy weekend ever right there so just make that happen uh tune in next week we'll be talking about our responses to the Batman. Unfortunately, Dan won't be joining us. We will also we have Destin Richardson, who is a diehard Penguin fan. So <laughs> like he legit knows he more facts about Penguin. It's, <laughs> I had to work on a Batman roast with him, and the amount of things he knows about the Penguin shocked me. <laughs> like four. I was like, "Fuck, you really are a Penguin fan. You weren't just bullshitting." So. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm very excited about that. Darth will be joining us for next week. Uh, tune in. Make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you uh, go to the YouTube page, like I said, and share us all out to everywhere. And until next time, I'm Jesse. And I'm John. And you've been sitting at the grown-ups table. Thank you so much, and have a good night, everybody. Take care. Night, everybody. Night. <laughs>